Yo, Sanjay Uchiha here, people. Bringing you my review for Dragon Ball Super Episode 62. And I believe the episode translation is, well, the episode title. I'll protect the world, Trunks' angry superpower explosion. Uh, man, what, what can I really say about this episode? It was... I don't know if it... it it's somewhere between okay and good. Because it has a few negatives, but it has some decent positives. So I guess overall I could call it a good episode. So, definitely getting into it. Um, we start off where we left off last week with Trunks transforming into this unidentified Super Saiyan form. And we go ahead and we get a fight scene between him and Black and Zamasu. And he's surprisingly... He seems to be on par with Black at this point, with Black still being able to damage him, but Trunks actually being able to put up a fight this time. However, this kind of leads into the one, the first negative I feel the episode has. I wasn't particularly impressed with the, I guess, the fight itself, or what we got in the beginning between Trunks and Black and Zamasu. I mean, it was cool to see Trunks being able to put up a fight, but it... It's specific has to do with how the fight was animated. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't any episode 56 or 57, um, in fact. It wasn't like those episodes at all. So it kind of just, uh, but still, it was epic seeing Trunks being able to put up a fight. So we eventually get the scene where Trunks hits Black into the ground and just, <laughs> he just straight up blasts him straight to the face, causing, and Black apparently was bleeding. Nothing too drastic, but um, at the end of the day, um, I must say, obviously, since I'm um, doing this review on Saturday, credit must go out to Herms98 on Twitter, Twitter as usual for providing the translations, so there's that. But according to Herms, Black is actually impressed with Trunks um, in the case, in this, that's because he has this much power, but he's still not too impressed, so that means um, probably Trunks is. He may be a bit stronger than Goku and Vegeta, probably. Well, probably not even probably, because he's doing even better than Goku and Vegeta at this point. And eventually Vegeta jo does join in the fight and goes up against Zamasu for a bit. And eventually, once Black is starting to get upper hand and trunks again, Black and Zamasu temporarily team up against Vegeta and knock him out. Well, not like, he doesn't lose consciousness, but he drops out of Super Saiyan Blue. And then eventually Trunks suggests that Goku and Vegeta head back to the past to actually find a way to defeat Zamasu and Black. So we go ahead and, well, based on the translations, Vegeta obviously would be concerned that Trunks is going to die, but <sighs> really they have no other choice at this point. So Vegeta eventually agrees, Bulma, Vegeta, um, jump into the time machine, they grab Goku of course, and Vegeta gives the Sensu Beans to Mai. I don't know why they didn't just use it to heal Goku there. I, I, I don't know. It just seems stupid. It just felt like they brought the Sensu Beans for no reason then. Because Mai was the only one that actually used one. So that was another like takeaway from the episode for me. And even there was a scene where in the fight between Trunks and Zamasu and Black. And you know Zamasu and Black did that combination. Key Blast and you can Trunks actually manages to push it away um they actually reused the same scene they reused the animation for that same scene because they did that combination twice in the episode so i didn't really like to see them actually reusing animation for that even though yeah it does save on money i guess so eventually goku goku and company actually reach back to the um the present where Bulma flips out on Beerus telling him that nothing's changed really and Beerus kind of starts to agree that Trunks' explanation of the multiple timelines may have been true obviously so he starts kind of step away from his previous explanation of how when one god feels another it should affect the timeline but we already know why, what happened in terms of why it didn't <laughs> work but yeah so eventually Vegeta explains everything that happened to everyone and Beerus doesn't really want to get himself involved in it since he claims that since this timeline Zamasu is already dead. 
Um, eventually, Chi Chi, we get to see Chi Chi trying to figure out where Goku is and asking Krillin for help, and she has Gohan with her. Krillin apparently doesn't know, so he eventually takes off. They glimpse Goten and Trunks flying in the night sky. Um, this is after Trunks eventually uh, actually went to um, Goten's house and I guess called him up to go back to the Capsule Corp. Um, so eventually, Vegeta is pondering if there's a way to beat Zamasu and Black. And we get to see Trunks actually um, trying to, I guess, persuade Bulma to let them go to the future as well to help out. But we know that that's not gonna. They're not gonna be of much help since Goku and Vegeta couldn't beat them. So Chi Chi eventually. Chi Chi and Gohan eventually forward, and eventually we they find out that Goku. Goku and Goten are there, and as time goes on, Goku and Vegeta explain the whole situation to them, and this, it kind of clicks to Gohan why Trunks stopped by, so after that we eventually get that, yeah, Vegeta explains the whole features of Monsters Immortal, and how Black essentially achieves some form of Super Saiyan. Piccolo eventually goes on to suggest using the Mafuba. Now, I mentioned in a previous um, video, but the Mafuba is the same technique that Master Roshi used back in early Dragon Ball to actually attempt to seal Demon Kill King Piccolo. Um, so, when Piccolo actually suggests this, and he suggests Roshi, Goku goes over, instant transmission is over, and asks Master Roshi to actually teach him how to do the Mafuba. Vegeta eventually gets up and Piccolo asks if he's going to the room of spirit of time aka the hyperbolic time chamber which is pretty good that Vegeta is going back there um Piccolo offers to show a demonstration but Goku's gone by that time um Roshi he's he has no problem teaching Goku the um the Mafuba and even though we had gotten the episode titles before which implied that Goku didn't take long to learn the Mafuba. I'm still surprised they actually have him mastering the Mafuba by the end of this episode. So he actually practices on Sea Turtle and practices to seal him into a jar after repeated failures. So I'm surprised how Goku got easy, but eh, it's not not a big deal. But yeah. So we eventually get to see Beerus and Whis. They take off and they go back to Universe 10 to talk to Goasu and. Based on the translation we get from Herms, Beerus is saying that he could easily take down future Zamasu, but as a god he can't break the ta taboo against time travel. Goasu claims that he'll take responsibility for the whole mess since he's the idiot that picked Zamasu to be the next Kaioshin. And that's the end of the episode. Um, as I said, this episode is somewhere between okay and good. With the early parts, I wasn't really impressed. As I mentioned before, I wasn't impressed with the how the fight was animated. It was cool to see, but it just wasn't impressive. Um, to me at least. I don't know, probably others would disagree with me. I don't know. Um, the next thing that took away from the episode, we got no explanation whatsoever about Trunks's... Well, at least based on what Herms is saying, until I watch episode sub, I can probably... I'll probably have to take back that statement, I don't know. But based on the translation that Herms has provided, we get no explanation on whether what what trunk what's up with trunks essentially? But his power level is obviously shot through the roof to even surpass Goku and Vegeta. And I don't really mind him surpassing Goku and Vegeta at this point. I just think getting no explanation, even though I kind of expected it because it's 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 Dragon Ball. <laughs> but that takes away from the episode as well. Um. But apart from the fight animation in the beginning and getting no explanation on Trunks' form, I'd say the episode was surprisingly well paced. Despite all I've been saying, we got a lot of things happening in this episode from the fights to Goku and Vegeta going back to the past to interaction with Beerus and Whis, Beerus and Whis going to Universe 10, Goku learning them a Fuba. So the episode was well paced and I think that really adds to it. So we don't really have to wait long before, I guess, Goku and Vegeta jump back into the fray. Another perk of the episode um, as well is that, and I've been saying this with the recent, well, 
for a lot of my reviews in the recent times is that this arc is really making use of supporting characters. It gives me great joy to actually see Gohan, Chi-Chi, Goten, Trunks, Bulma, Beerus, Whis, Goku, Vegeta, all of them, Piccolo, Krillin, all of them in one room discussion this issue. The thing is, we know Dragon Ball is an action-oriented show, yes, but if other characters who have been deemed, I guess, useless where fighting is concerned at this point, if they can contribute to, I guess, the plot in some other way, that is a definite plus. So that's another perk of this episode. Um, I'm glad to see that even though Beers doesn't really want to get involved, well, he says so, but he obviously wants to. I'm glad to see that him and Whis are actually, they're still, they're still kind of involved. I like that. I like that indeed. And I like that Vegeta is going back to the room of spirit and time. So it's not just Goku trying to improve himself, it's Vegeta as well. So it could be a case after this, well, then again, but Goku did have that rage boost. I don't know if his power, well, you have obviously got a Zenkai boost after healing, but I, I don't know if that makes him way stronger than Vegeta. And then after Vegeta comes out of the hyperbolic time chamber, he it's going to be equal to Goku again. I don't know, but that's besides the point. Characters are getting involved. I like that. Use of the supporting cast. Um, <sighs> is that? Do I have any other thoughts on this episode? <sighs> I, I don't know. With the perks and the negatives, I'd say. I mean, the fight scenes, the fight scenes, and lack of explanation for like not using the sensu beans versus, you know, good pacing, use of support characters. Yeah, it's between an okay and good episode, I'd say. Um, apart from that, the models of the characters were okay. Nothing too drastic, nothing too off-model, I'd say. Nothing too off-model. But, mm, yeah, it, it was okay. For next week, um, you know, we have this, um, sorry, <laughs> the episode tells already. Next week's episode is Don't Defile Saiyan Cells, the current rise in Vegeta's intense battle. And Goku and Vegeta, as stated in the, the video I did with the episode titles, are, would already be back in the future. So, as I said, these episodes are being paced very well. I like that. Um, I don't know. I need to really... I've been so busy lately that... I don't know. I really need to do a discussion video where Black is concerned. Um, because I, I have some things I need to get off my chest in terms of discussing about Black, but, um, all in all, it was, it was, uh, okay, good, <laughs> in between there. Um, but yeah, that's my episode review, guys. Um, if you haven't checked the episode out, I highly recommend that you do so, so, and I apologize if my background's been noisy, um, sorry <laughs> but yeah that's been my episode review episode 62 let me know what you think in the comment section below share this video out um remember to subscribe if you want more reviews and dragon ball news and discussions like well this is a review but you get what i mean so sanjay uchiha out see you in the next one yeah